tea sippers. Happy Tuesday. I hope everybody's doing good today. We have a great show for y'all. It's a lot to talk about, child. And I'm so glad. Okay, Raheem, I see you. I see a lot of people in the house. Hope you guys are doing good. Um, before we get started, um, y'all crashed my website two times today, but the website is back up. If you guys don't know, all of the dope beauty products are for sale for $5. We're doing a closeout. There's about I think we're down to about 50 products per product. I know a few things are already sold out, but if you're interested, we still have some shampoos and conditioners, really good products. I'm not going to have any more runs. So this is your last chance to get it at a blowout sale. So thank you to everybody who went and purchased and supported and crashed the site. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> so it is so much going on. It's a lot to touch on. Um, people have been requesting agreement on both of these topics. I figure let's combine it in one because censorship is becoming a big thing here, especially on social media. And I'm, I'm just starting to see a lot of stuff, honey. I'm starting to see a lot of patterns. I'm starting to see, you know, a lot of hypocrisy. So first, let me start. Let's talk about the Charleston White situation because I did a breakdown the other day. Um, and me and Emily also did a podcast on it. And we talked about the issue that he had with T.I., T.I.'s son, King, and little Boosie's son, Tootie Raw, both of whom, any other time, they're grown. You know, when people point out, well, why is your son 18 and smoking weed with you? It's one thing, you know, kids are going to smoke weed, but you're not going to be smoking weed with me. Oh, well, they're grown. My kid can smoke weed. He 18. But then when it comes to getting a verbal lashing by a grown man on the internet, now all of a sudden, you know, that's a baby, that's a kid, that's my son. He's, he's a child. You address the father. But when you want to smoke weed with the kid, he's grown. Now, like I told y'all on the podcast, I did not agree with the Trayvon Martin comment, and I stand by that. But everything else that Charleston White was saying about the situation was very true. Now, what's very interesting, if you guys don't know, recently... Little Boosie and T.I. decided to come together like Voltron, and they have been asking everybody in Black media. Now, they know not to call me because they move around with that bullshit. I don't subscribe to none of these media platforms. Lovely T Media is ran by Lovely T. Ain't nobody over here pulling no strings. I don't report to anybody. This is what you call independent media, okay? So they knew not to come over here, but they did reach out to DJ Academics. They reached out to uh, everybody at iHeart. Uh, they reached out to you know, Breakfast Club. And so basically they went on a whole boat tour demanding that everybody in black media, that you guys cannot interview Charleston White. And if you interview Charleston White or even co-sign him, um, they will not come on your platform. They will not fool with you. Now, Charleston White had two interviews, one with the 85 South Show, and he did one with Funny Marco. The interview with Funny Marco, I'm sorry to say, was trash. Uh, Funny Marco kept trying to, like, sun him and kept trying to, like, crack jokes that just made no sense. They were inappropriate. They had nothing to do with the topic. Um, somebody who's talking you know, with a level of consciousness, you can't bribe them with coochie, okay? Funny Marco, you, you can't bribe them with females. He was talking about stuff way deeper than just trying to, well, how much coochie we got to get you to pay you off? Um, so that ended up being a bust. But after T.I. and Boosie came together, Funny Marco took down... Um, no, I do watch his interviews. His interviews, Funny Marco's interviews are usually funny, but if you watch the one with Charleston White, it wasn't funny. He was trying to demean him and talk down to him. He wasn't cracking jokes. He was trying to like sun him. Um, but I have watched Funny Marco's interviews and he didn't have that same energy. With this one, he was coming out more serious with Charleston. And it was, uh, you could tell he was doing it because somebody was pressuring him, you know what I'm saying, behind the scenes. It wasn't like a genuine, funny, we're just clowning, we're having fun. He was very pressed. Are you in the nursing home? No, 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 no. I'm 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 in my big pretty house. So what's wrong? Like, what we gotta do just to like to just let you, like, we just just get off the internet. We just gotta pay. How much money we gotta pay you? Oh, uh, at least ten million. I feel, yeah, at I least feel like, I feel like we gotta uh, we gotta get you off the streets. Like you 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 uh, causing well, a lot of shit. Oh, uh, well, why y'all don't want to get the killers and the gangbangers off the streets? I mean, I don't know. Listen, we starting off with you right now. Now nah, I'm starting off with the killers, the gangbangers, and the rappers. I think the mother, I think the mothers would much rather me stay and the killers and the rappers go. 
So how you feel that, how you feel out the application for the NYPD, the FBI? Uh-uh. I'm working for free. I'm a real life superhero. Right. Yeah. I'm a real life superhero. Okay, okay, okay. So look, we're gonna go, you know ATT, look, we're gonna go to ATT, we're gonna get your iPhone. We're gonna do that, right? We're gonna start up with that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I can buy 50 iPhones. I didn't say you was broke. We didn't say you was broke. We not. But now, man, I'm a, listen, listen. I'm representing the pole nigga. I, I'm representing. I, listen, I'm representing the pole nigga. All them, all them iPhone niggas, nigga. Please, if they go broke, they can't stay nowhere for free. Mm -hmm. iPhone niggas ain't ain't hell of a niggas in the community. Android niggas is the niggas that's kicking niggas ass in the neighborhood. Android niggas is the niggas that's fucking all the holes in the warehouse uh, with the benefits on the job. iPhone niggas is weak niggas. Yeah, yeah, iPhone niggas can be tracked by their women. Uh, their locations can be shared. Uh, uh, they got a phone listening to them. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, nah, I don't want to, I don't never want to be no iPhone nigga. Mm -hmm. So what we got to do, so like New Year's, do we got like a plan? We just got to like, if you want, we can, uh, you can head over to Facebook too. You can get off Instagram and head over to Facebook. Mm -hmm. But look, that's what, look, look, you got to pick on people around your age, though. That's what I'm saying. You, like, listen, like, we got my, to... My, analy listen, my analytical data says 18 to 65 plus. So what that is, is from 18 to 65 plus. What the fuck they doing in my analytics? I'm not sending no invites. I don't send out invites. Do we got to get you some pussy? Like, what kind of pussy you want? Just to get you off the internet. Who you want? Can oh, we get you a girl? I want to die. I, I want to die more. But anyways, long story short, he ends up deleting the interview. And the interview was getting a bunch of traction. He ends up deleting the interview because T.I. told him to. Um, 85 South, their interview had been up for months. They deleted it. DJ Academics came on, said that T.I. and them also reached out to him to not interview with Charleston, to not talk to him. And DJ Academics basically said, no, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk to who I want to talk to. It is what it is. And so I want to just play you guys a small snippet here um, of T.I. and Boosie coming together like Voltron um, against Charleston White. So y'all go ahead and listen to this. But if you supporting anybody who coming against my kids, bro. I can't fuck with you, bro. I can't. That go for any vlog. That go for all y'all, bro. Anybody. You know. I ain't Everybody. Been, you know, people coming at my kids, bro. Like, if, like, bro, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I can't fuck with you. If you, if you fucking with that, I can't, you, bro. Like, you know, it's a line and to be. And his like, kids bro. and my kids. Like, Hit bro. kids in my kids, and, and, and we ain't, we ain't, tripping, bro. we ain't going for it, bro. Say what you want about us, with them children, man. It's them, it's them or us, man. It's them or us, man. Y'all pick. If y'all pick that, you deserve what the fuck you get. All right, so y'all just heard from T.I. and Boosie basically drawing the line in the sand, saying that it's them or us. They're gaslighting the people and wanting to shame them. Um, I hope that was also meant for Vlad TV, who we know fucks heavy with Lil Boosie, and he's also interviewed, you know, Charleston White. Now, what I find very funny about this situation is that these men can come together. Obviously, they don't really hang out because it was the first time T.I. had been over there. he never seen Boosie's pool. But it's funny they can come together for this situation to ban people from interviewing or talking to Charleston White, okay? Now, what about the people who are really a detriment in hip-hop? What about the people who sit here and brag about the shootings, the killings, the drug dealings? Oh, damn. I think those people are T.I. and Little Boosie and the rest of their rap cohorts. It's funny that somebody going in on their children needs to be banned, but somebody sitting here preaching and, and talking bullshit to the Black community, it's, it's business as usual. So this is self-serving. 
to me. This is just self-serving. And like I said, Charleston White has made a lot of inappropriate jokes. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've heard what he's talked about, aring women and things like that, but he's never done it. He says he was just joking. You really shouldn't crack jokes like that. But I just find it very interesting that everybody can come together to ban this one man. But I see a lot of inappropriate shit all the time with hip hop and online and in the hip hop community. And nobody calls for a ban on that. You got young kids out here drilling, rapping about killing each other and acting like it's a game. These two men, you know, what I'm saying have a huge following. They got a big voice in hip hop. Maybe I've missed when they've come out and spoken out against drill music or spoken out about these young kids killing each other in the Bronx. Or in Atlanta. You know, maybe I've missed that. It seems like whenever it comes to hip hop, oh, it's freedom of speech. And y'all are just trying to take our freedom from us. And that's how we eat. And that's how we raise our families. But now the son, you want to take other people's freedom of speech away from them. Do y'all understand how silly that is? So you're supposed to be allowed to rap about, you know, fucking all types of bitches, you know, having sex with two sisters at the same damn time, you know, selling crack, um, you know, popping E, having a bunch of kids by different women. You're supposed to be free to talk about all that stuff. But now black media on YouTube is supposed to, now censor themselves because y'all said so. How does that work? Why does freedom of speech all of a sudden not work both ways? So they can rap about any low vibrational gutter shit. But where we stop it is at Charleston White. I just found the whole situation very interesting and very hypocritical. But we'll be taking calls about that. Now, another thing I want to talk about, because like I said, you guys had also wanted to hit on the Kanye West situation. So Kanye West recently went on to Revolt TV, which is owned by, you know, well, not really owned, but, you know, Puffy's the face of it. And he went on to Drink Champs. And on Drink Champs, he, it was like a three-hour interview. And so I had been busy editing my deep dive all weekend. So that's what I was working on, just, you know, trying to, I've been researching for weeks, just trying to finish the edits. So when I first got sent the interview, I wasn't able to watch it over the weekend because I was so busy editing. So by the time I finished yesterday, I went to go try and watch it. So now I'm about an hour into the interview. All of a sudden, the interview just, just goes private. You can no longer watch this. It's private. I said, what the hell? So I ran the Discord. I was hot. I was with y'all were in the Discord yesterday. I was hot. Okay. Because I just feel like at, at what point are, are we going to see the censorship for what it is? You don't have to agree with everything or anything Kanye West said. That is everybody's individual right. You know what I'm saying? But he went on the platform. He stated a lot of stuff. And if he went onto the platform and you guys invited him onto the platform, we have the right to hear what he had to say about any said topic. So for them to private it, one, to me was bullshit because um, I forgot who, I think it might have been Jessica. I forgot who in the Discord was telling me over the weekend, Nori was doing a bunch of bragging on Twitter. Oh, he was super happy about this interview. Let me pull up some of the screenshots that people were posting. He was saying, imagine if Ye came back, Ye coming back tomorrow. Maybe it's a rumor. Then he says, this is the look they make when you realize you are the biggest in the game. We respect other platforms, but if we the biggest, if you want to stay with the culture, it is what we do because it's what we are at greatness. Nori drink champs. So he was feeling himself over the weekend. Um, okay, so Tia posted that. So I don't know what happened between the weekend and last night. But all of a sudden, everything went private. And when it goes private, all that means is we, the public, cannot access that information, but they still get the money. So if they were really sincere, they would have just deleted the video. But they're not going to because the video at that time yesterday when I was watching it, it had over two million views. That's a lot of ad revenue. So they're not going to they're not going to lose the money. OK, they had no problem bringing Yay on there, getting their coins. So they're not going to, you know, what I'm saying give back the money. But they will private the video to stop the backlash. My thing is they knew what they were doing when they had Kanye on there. So if you were willing to bring him on, knowing a lot of his stance, then why not stand at it? I don't respect people who don't stand 10 toes down in their shit. 
especially when you're on Twitter bragging that you're the biggest and the best and you're doing it for the culture. Well, sir, I'm trying to get edified on this culture that you're doing it for, but guess what? You privated the video. So I don't respect y'all. I don't respect drunk champs at this point. To me, y'all are drunk champs because y'all privated the video while talking all this shit on Twitter, while the first hour that I watched, they were co-signing, they were smiling, they were agreeing with a lot of the, his points. You know, so I, I just find it very interesting that a lot of the stuff that Kanye was saying about him being silenced and the media, you know, working these games, this just proved it to us. Somebody, I'm assuming it might have been Lee or Corn, tapped them on the shoulder and said, y'all better make this private, you know, because the way it just disappeared after all this bravado is very surprising. Now, I will say this, coming from the Twin Cities, growing up in Minneapolis and St. Paul, do I agree with his comments on George Floyd? No, I do not agree with those comments. Um, I was here when the riots broke out. I was at the George Floyd Memorial the day everybody went down to the South Side. I was out there recording video. I was out there when they started shooting. It was just a, a mess. I still have PTSD to this day. So I don't take that whole situation lightly as a joke. Um, I'm not really feeling the fact that Candace is in the Twin Cities trying to exploit the situation, but whatever. She's going to do that. So I don't agree with that part, but I've always been the type of person where I can eat the meat and spit out the bones. I don't have to agree with everything somebody says. I don't have to. I'm not that emotionally invested in Kanye or anybody. Okay. I, I'm just not that emotionally invested. I'm willing to listen. I was willing to watch the whole three hours. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to listen to anybody and listen to their points. I don't agree with Candace half the time, but I'll still sit and watch. If I'm going to do a review on something, I want to watch the full, you know what I'm saying, the full interview. The, I want to get everything in context. And some of the things he was saying in that in the interview was real. He was saying some interesting stuff. What also struck me that a lot of people missed was when he started talking about water. That really resonated with me because I did a whole deep dive before this one I just did about Jeffrey Dahmer. And it was all about water. So now I'm looking at this like, what is he slowly trying to say with this whole water situation that people are not even aware is getting more and more of a detrimental situation globally? Keeping an eye on Earth, severe drought spreading across the Midwest is pushing the Mississippi River's levels to record lows. Photos show how the river has contracted away from its banks. The usually mighty Mississippi looks more like a trickle in some areas with dry sand exposed where several feet of water usually flows. The low levels could lead to major shipping delays. Get this, the Mississippi River Basin produces nearly 92% of U.S. agricultural exports. The Mississippi River is drying up water levels in some areas near historic lows. It's already impacting supply chains and local tourism. But officials warn the situation could get worse soon. The river expected to keep dropping in the next few weeks. Right now, barges are getting stuck in mud and sand. Companies report they're not loading as much cargo on the ships so they can travel safely and not bottom out. The Mississippi River is, of course, a critical shipping route, especially for farmers. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers now dredging parts of the big muddy to keep the traffic flowing. What was those jewels that he was trying to drop? Because Kanye was so all over the place. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.